Yo guys, what's up? It's Gaz. Welcome to the Warframe video. So today we're going to go over the Mios, which is a, another blade and whip weapon uh, in the same class as the uh, Jet Kusar that we went over like last week. So I'm going to go over this thing. Some people were recommending in the comments I checked this out. Uh, and we already did a video on the Seti Listera and the Jet Kusar, which are the other two weapons in this uh, class. So might as well go over the last one here. So some differences we have here compared to the Jet Kusar and the Seti Listera. Unlike the Seti Lacera and the Jack Kusar, this thing has no innate elementals. It's just impact, puncture, and slash, with the highest weighting being in slash. Additionally, compared to the Jack Kusar, much lower crit, uh, crit stats. And if we go over the uh, comparison to the Seti Lacera, they're very, very similar stat-wise, with the biggest difference being the Seti Lacera actually has uh, the innate electric that we were talking about. So here's the, uh, the comparison here. Uh, so the Seti Lacera has about... 60 more base damage uh, while also having much higher crit stats. But like I said, this thing has no innate elementals, so you can do a pure toxin build on this thing, which is going to make it extremely effective at, against Corpus, bypassing their shields. Uh, and you can basically do any elemental that you want on this thing and not be restricted by uh, the electricity, the heat from the Jack Kusar, making that so it's, um, you know. I'd say the Jack Kusar is in a completely different league than this thing. It's got much higher base da uh, base damage and uh, a lot higher crit stats. So I, I Seti Lacera is going to be more of a closer comparison for this thing. So um, I'm going to I'm going to definitely say that I think the Seti Lacera is better, but uh, that doesn't mean this thing is bad. So I'm going to quickly show uh, a corrosive build here, and then we have the pure toxin build against Corpus. Uh, so. So here's the build I'm going to be running right here. So we're going to be running Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds just to show the max potential damage if you stack things up. And we've got 25% uh, status chance. If you were not looking to stack up Weeping Wounds, you could definitely run some 60-60 dual stats here, uh, which would be, for Corrosive, that would be Virulent, virulent Scourge and uh, Voltaic Strike. Um, and if you were running Viral, it would be Virulent Scourge and Vicious Frost. But I'm going to run Corrosive, because the way I'm looking at this, if I'm going to be doing a long run with a weapon, with a melee weapon such as this, I will be using something like a Kuva Nucor to proc Viral and Heat on the enemy. And then that means I don't need to get Viral from my weapon, I need to get Viral uh, just from my secondary. And then the Corrosive damage type is really good against armored enemies. So uh, I'll stack up Viral from my secondary and then hit him with a Corrosive uh, melee, and it should like just wreck them pretty much so right now we're just going to be using uh no outside buffs we'll get some uh gunners in here which are pretty flimsy nowadays to be honest but we'll we'll still show it and i'm not going to stack up viral on them right away just to show the the raw damage this thing has all right so we're going to use the forward combo which has some guaranteed slash procs in it so as you see not really that many crits but when we get stacked up here we're gonna start getting some orange crits now this thing will not get red crits unless you are using the Helios um, Sentinel Stat Stick combination with the Gladiator mods in there, or if you were to use them outside uh, crit sources like Avenger, um, if you were to put Sacrificial Steel on the build. Now, as you see, we're getting some pretty good slash procs in here, but the, the actual upfront damage, uh, for, for upfront damage, you're definitely going to want to go with the Jack Kusar uh, compared to this thing. But that, then again, you're getting slash procs here. It will technically scale a little bit better, I want to say, because the Jack Kusar does not proc slash very often at all, so... You don't want to mind. Um, so yeah, I think this thing is relatively okay. Um, I'd say all three of the Blade and Whips are some really, really powerful weapons. Now let's do it with some Viral stacking on those guys, and you'll see uh, with this multiplicative damage buff, it's going to be pretty powerful. That's fully stacked up with the, the Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds as well. So some Viral stacks back on her. Basically three shot them. Now the Jack Kusar would one shot them. I'm just going to I'm gonna keep comparing it to the Jack Kusar because they're all the same weapon type. But, you know, not, nothing bad at all. Also, this thing has the benefit of uh, sometimes procking toxin when you do a slam attack. See, there was some toxin right there. There's no toxin in the build. Uh, not really something you're depending on at all, but it, it's nice to at least know it exists. So, um, let's quickly show the toxin build against some uh, some Corpus Tex. We're also going to throw the Riven on. I'm lending this Riven from somebody. Thank you for letting me borrow this. We've got critical damage, melee damage, plus range, and minus puncture. Uh, and the thing, the, the, another nice thing about the Mios compared to the Lacera and the Jet Kusar is this thing actually has the strongest Riven disposition. So the behind-the-scenes stats, you will get higher stats on a Mios Riven compared to a Steady Lacera or a Jet Kusar Riven uh, until they possibly change that in the future. So 
Here we go. We're going to do some viral stacking here just so we can one-shot them. It goes right through their shields, and they're dead. So, yeah, the Jakusar and the the Lacera cannot do that because of the innate elementals. So, you might value that pretty highly if we ever get some high-level Corpus content in the future. Uh, potentially could be better there. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm going to show it with a corrosive build against the tankiest enemies I can spawn in here, which is uh, the Exo Goose Drag Officer, which they're about to tank. They're about to nerf the tank stats on this on these guys, so I won't be able to do this test anymore after the, uh, the upcoming change. So here it is. This is with the Helio Sentinel and with Blood Rush and a uh, and some Gladiator mods on my Anaros. So yeah, you can get red crits if you do all that stuff, but yeah, like I said, without the Gladiator bonus. Uh, out from the outside, you're not going to be getting red crits. It's just going to be yellow and orange, because this thing has a uh, relatively low crit chance, I think. So, yeah, pretty good stuff there. A lot of melee weapons can accomplish that nowadays, but, um, you know, this thing is pretty pretty good uh, base stats. Also, uh, when you're looking at it like this, the little mouth on it moves, as you can see right there. It's like a little dragon mouth or a bird mouth. So, um, yeah, I'm going to now take us into a mission. We're going to do uh, the corrosive build in a mission with the Riven I'm being lent, so thank you very much for letting me borrow that. Um, yeah, if I ever am doing another video in the, the future and I don't have a Riven for a specific weapon, uh, I'll either buy one or ask someone to lend it to me. And I really appreciate uh, people that contact me through uh, in-game or whatever. So, yeah, I'd say the hierarchy of the Blade and Whip weapons, I'd say number one, Jack Kusar. I did a level 800-900 mission the other day, and it was one-shotting stuff. With Viral, of course. A Viral stack up. I'd say number two is a Seti Lacera. Now, this is my opinion. The Seti Lacera has really good attack speed too, just like this thing. So you might find that more comfortable to use. Um, and then I'd say number three is the Mios. Now, if you get a God Roll Mios Riven, maybe you could make it better than the Seti Lacera. Uh, but you are losing a good chunk of base damage. Uh, and you're lose, losing some stats all over the place, honestly, running the Mios. So, yeah, I'd say uh, Mios third place. But that, that does not mean it's bad. As you saw right there with the Riven and stuff... Uh, viral stacking, we were able to tear through those Exo Goose Drag officers like they're nothing. Uh, yeah, we're going to hop another uh, Kuva Requiem Exterminate mission, which is, you know, I think that's a pretty good test for a melee weapon. This is like, well, first off, the Kuva Flood wasn't, I already done the Kuva Flood this hour, so I'm going to do a, this is like a level 60 to 70 uh, corrupted mission. We got plenty of Grenier in there too, and this is a corrosive build, so we're also running Naraman just to not worry about the combo. As you see, one shot that guy, about 27,000. This is the critical damage and melee damage ribbon. So, as far as god roll stats and ribbons, guys, uh, a lot of people nowadays are wanting to run uh, range, critical damage, and attack speed with minus, like, slide crit or minus infested. I personally do like critical chance because if I'm not running uh, blood rush or anything like that, uh, getting that upfront critical chance to improve my, my damage up front I think is very valuable. And honestly, like, uh, melee damage, if you're, if you're running Condition Overload, upfront melee damage is not an amazing stat, but then again, it's not a terrible stat either, because the, the way that Condition Overload works, you're going to get so much additional uh, melee damage that if you have something like attack speed or uh, critical damage or range, it's just going to make things uh, multiply a lot faster and quicker, and that the extra 150% melee damage you're getting is really not going to be uh, as valuable as some other stats. It's not, it doesn't make the weapon, it doesn't make your ribbon bad at all. Um, don't let people trying to act like their opinions are facts tell you otherwise. It's not like it's a bad stat, um, but it technically could be a little bit better. So, uh, As far as a god roll on this thing, I'd recommend uh, attack speed, critical damage, uh, range, and maybe even critical chance if you want to run that, uh, and then minus slide crit or minus infested or finisher damage. So, Those are some of the top stats for like every melee weapon. Uh, the critical damage versus critical chance, if you're... A lot of these people that are trying to like say that critical chance is worthless are taking their entire uh, mindset on this from if you, you're to always have Blood Rush stacked up all the way. And if you're not running Naromon, it's very easy to lose your Blood Rush multiplier, uh, combo multiplier for that matter, so um, that's that's where it, it kind of falls apart. It's like, okay, so I have to have this condition met to actually uh, consider crit chance bad. Okay, well, I don't I don't really get on board with that conversation, so... Um, yeah, but like like I said, uh, crit damage and attack speed can improve your DPS very highly, and then range is always just good to hit multiple enemies much easier. So we have range on this ribbon; it's about like a seven meter radius, I want to say, or seven meter range, and we can hit enemies like relatively far away. And if you hit more enemies, you build your combo faster, so it does make sense. And attack speed, uh, you're still gonna want to run berserker a lot of the time, even with an attack speed ribbon, uh, and even arcane strike. 
But uh, when I did that level 900 mission the other day, I actually did not run. I did not run Berserker. I ran Arcane Strike, and I have an attack speed ribbon like Jack Kusar, so... Uh, I was able to fit even more damage on in that last slot by min maxing my build by not running a Berserker. Not saying that was the right choice, but that's a choice I made, and I was one-shutting level 800 Kuba Guardians, so... There you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, but as far as if I would recommend this to you guys, I'd say yeah, I, I would. It has if you if you are a person who likes to collect ribbons too, ribbons on this thing can be pretty powerful. Um, but if you already have the Jack Kusar, don't I'd say don't bother with this because I over I do find the Jack Kusar better overall. Um, it has lower stash chance by a lot, but it doesn't really mean much because it has so much more crit chance and crit damage that you'll be tearing through enemies at like breakneck speed. So um, yeah, that's gonna be it for the video. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, like I said, I did not do a viral build on the weapon because the way I play, I'm going to stack up viral from my Kuva Nucor, and then I'm going to hit them with Corrosive, and since Corrosive ignores a portion of their armor and has good multipliers against armor, it just makes a lot more sense to run Corrosive on your weapon uh, instead of viral. But if you're not running a viral uh, status supplier like the Kuva Nucor, go ahead and run uh, viral on the weapon, and you'll, you'll still do really, really good. And you'll be proccing viral from your weapon itself. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, more videos coming out uh, throughout the week. And make sure you check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash gaz underscore TTV. Uh, trying to stream some more here, so I will see you then. Peace, guys.